uh, now, uh, you know, you all know Mr. Calamos, Mr. Kudunis, Matt Fairfield and Pablo Stanelopoulos. Uh, they are going exactly to discuss with us how they have been looking at Greece from a new perspective. Here we have a group that uh, is uh, ready to open its wallet and make a big investment in Greece. Uh, so I think there is nothing better than this kind of vote of confidence. And with that, I would like to welcome them to the podium. Mr. Guzzinis uh, is going to moderate uh, the panel. So thank you very much for being with us and the floor is yours. And I'm delighted we have with us uh, the mayor of Athens is already with us. And we have our two honorees, Mr. Tsamaz and uh, Nick Logothetis, and the U.S. ambassador uh, is with us as well. So we have a full house. And I forgot to mention Mr. Panagopoulos, who was the former Greek ambassador to the U.S. So full house. Thank you, Nico, very much. Uh, uh, I'm Apostolos Gujinis. I'm a partner at Sherman Sterling, an international law firm. It gives me a, a real pleasure to be here today in this distinguished panel. Uh, um, Mr. John Calamos, founder, chairman, and global chief investment officer of a, of a global investment firm, Calamos Investments. Mr. John Kudun is the CEO of Calamos Investments. Uh, and. Uh, Pavlos Kanelopoulos, and uh, uh, Mr. Matt Fairfield, uh, the CEO of a major, uh, major insurance company. Uh, the, the purpose of the panel is to talk about the changing environment for investment in Greece. Uh, I think it has become obvious in the course of today that, uh, and, and, and rather a truism, that, that Greece is in desperate need of investment. Counting through the panels, we talked about debt and equity investments in the corporate sector. The financial institutions are selling their NPLs. They need, they need investors in the NPL portfolios. They need investors in the restructuring effort. They need investors in their own balance sheet to, uh, to repay ELA and, and grow, grow the, the liability side of the balance sheet. The government is in the market for investments, infrastructure, real estate, other assets. I, th I, th I think it's, it's fair to say that Greece Incorporated is, is out there in the global financial system seek, seeking to rebuild uh, its, uh, its balance sheet, attract direct investment, attract equity debt investment in all types, shapes and sizes. Um, to get today, in this panel, we are going to talk about the perspective of the international investor. Um, I think the, the first question will be probably common to all of the panelists. Uh, the, the competition for investment is global. Any major investment firm, fund, private equity fund, uh, is looking at the, the global financial system, and any recipient of investment competes with the 50 U.S. states and approximately 195 countries in the world to attract investments. It's, it's a global capital and financial market, and, and certainly investors looking for yield, looking for uh, opportunities, are assessing the attractiveness of each jurisdiction against the global market. So without further, I, I, perhaps I would turn to Mr. Calamos with his vast experience in assessing and identifying opportunities, and I'd like to ask him, um, from your perspective, how you feel about Greece as an investment destination. Has anything changed? Um, what, what, are the, what are the advantages and the disadvantages? What is the climate today? How do we move from here? Well, I think it's, it's very important. I think uh, really following up with uh, Dean's um, talk as well, what do we know about investments? 
capital goes to where it's treated best. What do we know about human capital? It goes to where it's treated best. When we, when we talk here, we learn that there's a brain drain. Why are they leaving? In, in America, when the Greeks have come to America, what we call it is living the American dream. They're able to take their ideas and translate them into opportunities and new ideas. And what we're hopeful here is that Greece is realizing that and will allow that to happen in the future. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that and um, we hope uh, that we can be a catalyst to see how that could continue to improve uh, the Greek economy and really the welfare of, of the whole of the whole population here. So uh, it, it's important that if somebody has a good idea that they can execute that, they can start a business, they can make it grow, they can, and that will help everybody here. So uh, we're hopeful uh, that's happening and um, what we hope with, with this opportunity that we have here that we can provide new solutions uh, for families and uh, obviously help them grow the investment opportunities there. So we're excited about that. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kudunis, if, if I were to, uh, to be a, a, little, a little more specific about the investment climate today and the timing of your uh, potential entry in, into the Greek market, uh, is it uh, the, the specific opportunity that attracted you to, uh, to Greece? Is it a change of the climate based on all the efforts of policymakers and, and the, the, the general population over the last several years? Is it a combination of that? Uh, as, as you assess your investment opportunities, what, what particularly attracted you um, at this point in time uh, to Greece? Well, uh, it's, it's no secret that uh, our, my friends here and I have been coming to Greece for several years now looking and assessing the opportunities uh, that may or may not be uh, available for global investors such as ourselves. <clears throat> as the entire world changes, uh, as uh, most countries get more regulated, as spreads continue to tighten, as interest rates are down uh, or, or negative in some countries, it gets a lot more uh, difficult to uh, get the returns around the world. So we're constantly looking for opportunities. Now you ask why Greece, why now? I think um, it's important to see that uh, the most, one of the things that we look at as long-term investors is stability. More importantly, confidence. So the fact that there actually has been a little bit of stability in Greece has given us a little bit more confidence to look in. And what I'm saying is we're starting to see some changes. We feel that it is absolutely, if not the bottom of the market, close to it. Um, and there has been some movement in terms of some of the uh, projects and some of the, uh, uh, the, the sales that have happened around the country. So as we look at this and uh, Let's not make a mistake here. We are looking at the actual assets that we're acquiring, um, and we're looking at them, can they make money on a standalone, and the backdrop being the sovereign risk of the country. Uh, so as we look at uh, our targets, if they can make money in a standalone, if we can bring some expertise in terms of management um, and Western-style views is, is, is what we're seeing, and put it into a model that we're building to increase the yields, when the country starts to turn around, our returns should get even exponentially greater. So we feel that we've seen these signs. We've started dipping our toe several months ago. And now uh, we're taking a bigger jump. So uh, the time, it's, a, it's a little bit of uh, everything that you mentioned, I think. Thank you very much. Uh, Matt, you, uh, you are a, a well-known executive in the financial and, and insurance sector. 
uh, probably a little bit of an outsider uh, to to the Greek economy. But from from your perspective, and, and having you having worked also in other countries in Southern Europe, from your perspective, um, how do you how do you assess the the investment climate in in Greece? What are the the main issues that you think should be resolved? Um, what what are the opportunities? And and what would you have to uh, if, if, what would you have to say to policymakers in this country to make this a more attractive uh, investment destination? Well, well, thank you. Here we go. That's the, my first start, turning the microphone on. Um, first of all, uh, it's very kind of what you said about me. I never forget what I do is sell insurance. So we, f we focus on where we can bring merit, and I, I say it that way. Because as we consider opportunities, we do focus on fundamentals. And as John said, or both John said, there's stability that's necessary. Um, capital and human capital both need to feel welcome. Uh, and, and in commenting on that, I have to say, uh, especially over the last year, uh, we've been able to engage with a very positive dialogue uh, with, the, with the existing you know, government right now. Uh, they've been very practical in our opinion. Uh, they are trying to move things forward. Um, Mr. Petrolis just spoke before. I have to say that uh, there's some great leadership standing up and making um, outside investment feel like there's an opportunity to, to get a fair return for the risk we're going to take. When you think about, and, and commenting on what he just said, I, I despite my accent, uh, live in Barcelona. I've lived in Europe for 26 years now. Uh, my wife and my kids are Dutch, and I've got a big mixture in the, in the house. So despite my accent, I have been in Europe for quite some time. And post-crisis uh, in Spain, I saw, you know, as you guys have seen here, the cranes not moving for days and years and waiting to see what was going to happen and get a change. And then finally, we started to see some green shoots. I see the same thing right now in Greece. I see from some of the attitudes of people, uh, some of the behaviors and just in interactions we have in different, you know, different negotiations or, or different work streams, we've seen people willing and enthusiastic to move forward. And seeing that in the public and private partnership, that gives me encouragement that there's some great things ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Canelopoulos, uh, for you, more or less the same, the same question around the, inv the investment climate and the, uh, the, the shift uh, in, uh, in, in the macro environment and, and the attitudes for that, but m for you, more from the perspective of the domestic executive uh, looking for opportunities to grow the business, to get financing, to, to reconnect with the global investment community after years of... Uh, uh, of some detachment that the country has suffered. So w what, what are your thoughts? So being the Greek Greek ingredient in this group, I will switch to, to Greek, if you don't mind. Thank you. I would say that my experience is that the climate has changed and is aesthetic. We see that there are many conversations and discussions about new opportunities. Και άρα η Ελλάδα έχει μπει στο μικροσκόπιο των ξένων επενδυτών, μάλιστα σε διαφορετικού τομεί, το οποίο είναι πολύ σημαντικό. Θεωρώ ότι αυτό δεν σημαίνει ότι δεν υπάρχει ακόμα προβληματισμό σε επιφυλακτικότητα, διότι υπάρχουν τα γνωστά προβλήματα που ακόμα δεν έχουν λυθεί, όπω η αξιολόγηση, οι ελληνικέ παθογένειε που έχουν να κάνουν, για παράδειγμα, με την γραφειοκρατία με την ε, ταχύτερη, απονομή, ταχύτερη απονομή δικαιοσύνης, το ένα σταθερό φορολογικό πλαίσιο και πολλά άλλα. Ε, άρα θα έλεγα ότι αυτή τη στιγμή ένα από τα σημαντικά πράγματα είναι ότι θα πρέπει να βελτιώσουμε, να διορθώσουμε, να βελτιώσουμε αυτό το κομμάτι και, αυτές τις, ε, ε, και αυτά τα κακό σκήμενα που υπάρχουν στην ελληνική οικονομία και αγορά. Ε, από εκεί και πέρα όμως νομίζω ότι Αυτό που προσπαθήσαμε εμείς και γι' αυτό και είχαμε αυτές τις κουβέντες και έχουμε κάνει αυτή τη συνεργασία με την Exin είναι να προβάλλει κανένα τα θετικά στοιχεία της Ελλάδος. Και από τη μία πλευρά είναι να γνωρίζεις το αντικείμενό σου, να υπάρχει επαγγελματισμός 
ε, να υπάρχει συνέπεια και συνέχεια από τη μία πλευρά και από την άλλη ότι είμαστε μια ωραία χώρα με καλό κλίμα, εργατικούς και φιλόξενους ανθρώπους και με μια καλή ποιότητα ζωής, έστω και μέσα μετά από 7-8 χρόνια κρίσης. Α, από εκεί και πέρα νομίζω ότι είναι πολύ σημαντικό να βάλει κανένας στην εικόνα το θέμα να προβάλλει κανείς την Ελλάδα ως ασφαλές λιμάνι. Βρισκόμαστε σε μία εποχή που βλέπουμε γύρω μας τι γίνεται ε, γεωπολιτικά, ότι υπά... όλα είναι πολύ ρευστά, βλέπουμε τι γίνεται στη γειτονιά μας. Άρα νομίζω ότι ο κόσμος αποζητά και οι επενδυτές αποζητούν ε, ένα περιβάλλον ασφαλές και νομίζω είναι κάτι που θα πρέπει να προβάλλουμε και να προσπαθήσουμε να επιτύχουμε μέσα στο επόμενο διάστημα ακόμα περισσότερο. Γιατί είναι κάτι που είναι πολύ σημαντικό. Από εκεί και πέρα είναι και ο ανθρώπινος παράγοντας. Ε, η ικανότητα του Έλληνα στο επιχειρή. Έχουμε πλάι μας μερικά φωτεινά παραδείγματα. Τον κύριο Κάλαμος, τον κύριο Κουδούνη, ο κύριος Μητρόπουλος που μίλησε πιο νωρίς, ε, οι οποίοι είναι δεύτερη, πρώτη και δεύτερη γενιά ε, Ελλήνων ε, που βρίσκονται στο εξωτερικό. Ε, και άρα νομίζω ότι ενώνοντας τις δυνάμεις προσπαθώντας να βάλουμε κάποια πράγματα σε τάξη. Αυτό που θα είναι πολύ σημαντικό είναι να μπορέσουμε να δημιουργήσουμε τις κατάλληλες συνθήκες για επενδύσεις από το εξωτερικό και επίσης να μπορέσουμε να σταματήσουμε αυτό το brain drain που γίνεται στην Ελλάδα και το οποίο θα βοηθήσει τους Έλληνες, που έχουμε, τους νέους ανθρώπους που έχουμε πάρα πολλού ικανούς ανθρώπους να μείνουν στην Ελλάδα και να βοηθήσουν στην ε, ε, αναδιοργάνωση και ανάπτυξη της ελληνικής οικονομίας. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kalamos, a, a, a very candid question to you. I think a lot of us uh, in Greece and a lot of experts internationally, I think, have always wondered in the last few years um, to to what extent the, the Greek diaspora, uh, including the uh, prominent Greek-American community, uh, would be willing or uh, has examined the, the possibility of making investments in Greece. Obviously, you are a fine example of somebody who has put in the effort and, and to, to examine and assess these opportunities. Do you feel that uh, this can create a momentum for others to follow? Uh, and, and what needs to happen for that uh, to uh, not be a one-off, but pave the way for uh, followers? Well, I think it could. I think, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it could be a catalyst for that. I think there has to be, obviously, continuation uh, with uh, decreasing the regulations so businesses can succeed. So they have to see that trend continue going forward. And I think you'll find that uh, more investors will, uh, will continue to look at the opportunities here. So I think that's very important that that happens and uh, uh, because part of what's going to make uh, the economy grow is to really increase that private sector and to bring investors in here uh, to be able to do that. So I, I think uh, Hopefully, we, we would be a catalyst for that, and we'll see those trends. I think you'll find uh, other investors uh, coming into uh, Greece. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Kudunis, the, I think the, the prospective investment that, that, uh, that is being discussed or, or implied is in, uh, in the financial and in insurance sector in particular, and it's obviously a very big investment. Um, what particular advantages in the sector uh, you identified uh, in, in considering that, that opportunity? Well, uh, I think you're, you're speaking about uh, something that we're, we're currently in progress working on, and uh, that's ethnic as well as key. But I think you need to remember that in December, we became partners uh, with Pablo in um, AIG Greece. And so we are in a sector already. We're in a sector here in Greece, and that is the financial sector. And there's a, there's a tremendous amount of synergies in insurance and investment management. 
And so um, that is uh, one of the reasons why we are looking at this particular asset. Thank you. Uh, Matt, for the, the, my next question to you uh, is, uh, is, is in, in, in relation to uh, the perspective of other international executives um, and the, the investment opportunities in Greece. Uh, in the last few years, as I also uh, practice law in an international environment and speaking to lots of investors and, and CEOs and, and uh, investment bankers, there has always been a certain level of distrust uh, over Greece as an investment destination. Sadly, uh, uh, for, for better or for worse, their reputation and the brand of the country for international, investor, international investment has suffered. Uh, do you feel that this is changing? Do you feel that uh, we are finally turning a new page where um, the, the values of the country and the virtues of the country as an investment destination are being appreciated again? I, I would uh, connect a few of the questions and comments together. Um, you know, it's not, it's not one big step. It's a lot of little steps to get to the big step. So this step forward is a great first step, uh, but echoing what John just said, this is a possibility to be a bridge to new capital investment coming in, and it's gonna be into the execution of, I know what we're working on and what others will come and do as well. They have to feel there's a fair chance to come ply their trade, to invest in the economy, to work closely with people in this economy and expand the economy not just here, but super regionally. So the opportunity absolutely is there. There has to be you know, mutual engagement, uh, as, as Dean said before, um, what Mr. Clinton said, which was, you know, we need to roll up the red carpet here, not, uh, not fill it with full of red tape. And, and there should be a balance, of course, to um, laissez-faire capitalism versus having correct regulation, without a doubt. But we have to ensure people have a fair opportunity to engage in processes transparently, be treated fairly, and then when they go to build the business, to work closely with government and the private sector to take it forward. And, and those examples happen, and I think you see an extraordinary opportunity for a lot of people looking to invest in Greece. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Kanelopoulos, uh, from, from, from your perspective, being active, in the Greek market being active in the Greek insurance and financial market for a long period of time, uh, surely you, you have identified areas of either deregulation or better regulation, uh, better, uh, better governance and better rulemaking uh, that, would, uh, uh, that would be necessary to further grow your business. Um, what would, what would those areas be that, that you think are absolutely critical for, for further development of the sector and, and, and further growth in the sector? Um, I would say that the most important issues, as I say, are the most important issues είναι διαφάνεια, είναι να υπάρχει, να βγαίνουν διάφορες νομοθετικές ρυθμίσεις, όπως ανέφερα και πιο πριν, είναι το θέμα της δικαιοσύνης και να μπορεί να προχωράνε τα πράγματα πολύ πιο γρήγορα, είναι ένα σταθερό φορολογικό πλαίσιο. Ε, όλα αυτά νομίζω ότι είναι πολύ σημαντικά για τις επιχειρήσεις, μαζί βεβαίως με το θέμα ε, της δανειοδότησης και των τραπεζών. Ε, νομίζω ότι αν μπορεί κανένα να λύσει κάποια από αυτά τα θέματα θα είναι πολύ πιο εύκολο για τις επιχειρηματίες να μπορέσουν να λειτουργήσουν γιατί αυτή τη στιγμή το, το περιβάλλον είναι πολύ δύσκολο. Και επίσης με αυτόν τον τρόπο θα έρθουν και ξένες επενδύσεις. Thank you. Um, for uh, Mr. Kalamos, uh, the, the next question is, 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 is trying to uh, identify potentially uh, if there is any difference between um, 
the perception and the reality, the, the perception being uh, uh, possibly that, that the, the legal system in Greece may be not uh, efficient for international investors, the bureaucracy may, may, be, may be creating disincentives for international investment, the complexity of the tax system, a number of, um, a number of hurdles that relate directly or indirectly to uh, the legal and judicial and, um, and, and uh, 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 government infrastructure, so to speak. Um, candidly, through your experience the last few years and, and months looking into these opportunities more closely, uh, has that perception been met with reality? Um, what, what has been your personal experience? Well, we're seeing, we're seeing some uh, changes to the positive. And remember, uh, the uh, high regulation, well, we have the same thing in the United States. Way too much regulations. We've had the worst growth rates over the last eight years because of too much regulation. So hopefully people learn from that and how, uh, let's unleash the investments and the productivity from people from less regulations in doing that. And we're seeing some of that happen here. Uh, as was spoken earlier, it's small steps. Uh, we hope that uh, people look at those small steps, see the benefit, and they increase that going forward. Uh, we don't have any way to predict that, but we hope that uh, we can help be a catalyst for that change uh, going forward, and, and I think that will help get those GDP numbers uh, where, where they were estimated to be in the future here. Thank you. Mr. Kudunis, same question for you. Perception versus reality in, in, in sourcing and executing in investments <coughs> in Greece and, and the legal system. Well, I, I think that legal system, um, being that you're Sherman Sterling, and you've used your uh, firm uh, many times in the past, um, I, I think that's a very specific question. And yes, there is red tape in the legal system, but I think that maybe more poignant for this dis uh, discussion is how does one, in general, get things done when all these things are obstacles? And we feel that... Um, couple things. Number one, you have to be very measured. And there's a, there's a saying, you know, measure twice, cut once. And I think that we've taken our time to do that. Number two, it takes a village to get things done. And um, I think that we've uh, reached out to a lot of people, and Matt alluded to this, and, and uh, I have to say that we are very fortunate that there are really great people here uh, in all aspects. Uh, and a lot of them are in this room. A lot of people have helped. A lot of people have, um, from parts of the government, and agnostic to parties, because both parties have been very helpful, uh, to the ambassador here in the United States, to um, people back home in the United States, um, and even to the, the Greek church. And we've reached out to everything, and it seems like we needed to reach out to everybody in order to get some of our points across and hopefully will be successful. But it takes, it, it takes perseverance, um, it takes patience, uh, but it takes also confidence and the willingness to know that if you pierce through this, you will succeed. And I think that we've put together um, a great team of people that we know for a long time, that we trust, and um, that is, uh, there's, it's hard to measure exactly what that brings to the table, but we feel it's very, very strong. And you know, people have asked us months ago, uh, what are your thoughts? And I, I said, well, I'm, I'm confident that we're gonna put together something that we're all gonna be proud of and um, be able to pierce through anything. And, uh, you know, and I'm glad uh, that we're here and I'm glad that we're going forward. And, um, we're excited to do some, some great things and help other people do great things, um, not just economically, but for, for, this, for the country. Thank you. Um, Matt, the, uh, the, the country is, is competing, obviously, with other European countries with similar 
development and growth profiles. Uh, Spain, Portugal are often viewed as uh, competitors of, of Greece in, in, the, in the competition for global investment. From your experience uh, in Spain and seeing the, the situation on the ground in Greece, are there any lessons um, we can learn from our uh, Iberian competitors? Uh, picking up on a comment John just made, persistence. There's a phrase I like to use, and, I, I, and it's a quote, it's not mine. But persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. You got to keep going and soldiering on. And I'll tell you, there were some very, very tough times in Spain, as there are, have been on our tough times here. But if you're persistent and you keep coming back every single day, doing the best you can, doing the right thing, you, do, you can incrementally change things. And after all those small steps, you get to the big step. So the, the most important thing is to be persistent, never, never give up. And I know there's times where I'm sure here, and I saw it in Spain, and I've seen it in a few other different economies, people want to give up. It's difficult. We have to work together. That's another thing I'd like to say. You know, there's some very intelligent people in this room. Uh, I'm lucky for the partners I get to sit on this die with. We can't do it ourselves. We can help. We can work very hard. We can bring ideas. We can help work with people, lead people, but we can't do it ourselves. We need to work with everybody in the country, and we need to have engagement from everybody to see that we're pulling together to build this. It's, it's not... Uh, any special magic wand we have, right? We're going to come here, we're going to work hard, and we're going to do the best we can. But we have to do it in partnership with the people in this room and the people in the country. Thank you for that very nice message. Uh, last but not least, uh, Mr. Kanelopoulos, from, from the perspective of the, the local executive in, a, in an outward-looking company, what, what is your message to other CEOs of uh, successful Greek businesses looking for opportunities to either partner up with foreign investors, attract investment, or enter into various types of ventures and cooperations. What, what, what is your message to, to other aspiring CEOs uh, in our country? I would say that I have said that it is very important η συνέπεια και η συνέχεια, ο επαγγελματισμό και επίσης να γνωρίζει κανένας καλά το αντικείμενό του. Ε, μέσα από αυτό δημιουργεί ένα track record με το οποίο μπορεί να μιλήσει σε άλλη βάση, με επενδυτές, με άλλους ανθρώπους που θέλουν να κάνουν join, ε, αρκεί να γνωρίζει καλά την, την αγορά σου. Από εκεί και πέρα είναι πολύ σημαντικό η διαφάνεια και βεβαίω να μπορεί ε, να λειτουργήσει και να μπορεί να παίρνει αποφάσεις άμεσες και γρήγορε μέσα σε ένα δύσκολο επιχειρηματικό περιβάλλον όπως είναι η Ελλάδα. Αλλά από εκεί και πέρα νομίζω ότι ως Ελλάδα έχουμε πολλά καλά. Ανέφερα πριν το θέμα του ανθρώπινου παράγοντα. Νομίζω ότι υπάρχουν ικανότατοι άνθρωποι στην Ελλάδα. Ε, άρα αν μπορείς κανένας να προβάλλει όλα αυτά τα πράγματα είναι ένα πολύ δυνατό σημείο για να μπορέσει να φέρει ξένους επενδυτές και ξένες επενδύσεις στην Ελλάδα. Thank you very much. I, I think this, this probably concludes the the panel session, I would only spend maybe 30 seconds summarizing um, what, we've, uh, what we've heard. I, I think in, the, in the, public conscience, I, the public conscience of Greeks the last few years, the, especially the beginning of a crisis, the initial view of the international investor was the view of the, the international bondholder attacking uh, attacking the Greek government bonds and through that, uh, you know, leading the country into, into a liquidity and debt crisis, the, the very notion of attack uh, marking a, a physical movement, threatening physical movement towards the country. Of course, in reality, uh, it was anything but that. It was a, the panicking departure of those investors from the liabilities of the country completely trying to get out as quickly as possible. And I think we've probably come full circle now realizing that we need foreign investment across the board, the corporates, the financial institutions, the infrastructure, 
the government assets, the real estate, the financial system, and, and it seems to me that we have heard great messages today about um, the, the hard task of building this international confidence in recognition that we're not an island, uh, we're not special, uh, but we are competing with uh, dozens and hundreds of other opportunities globally, and it is the trust of the investor community that, that this country needs to regain. Uh, uh, thank you, each and every one of you, for, 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 these, uh, for these comments. Thank you very much for the a dynamite panel. Thank you to all the panelists for a really great uh, panel. That, that was tremendous.